Hi, I'm Joan Goodchild, and welcome to another edition of Security Sessions, where we talk about trends and topics important to security managers. Today, I am joined by Sanjay Raja. He is with Lumetta there in the network and security monitoring space. But tell me a little bit more about Lumetta before we launch off. Sure. Lumetta uh, does discovery of network and endpoints. And based on that discovery, we're able to do real-time monitoring to make sure that you know, customers don't get breached. Uh, essentially. So um, it's basically what Lumetta does. And so today we're going to be talking about IoT specifically, CSOs and what they need to know about locking down IoT. Sure. Um, let's start with kind of, you know, knowing what's on the network. Do most CSOs know what's on their network or is it a case of, you know, they might know some of it but don't exactly know what's going on with their endpoints? Can you speak to that? Sure, yeah. When, when we look at IoT especially, um, you know, there's so many devices connecting right now and so many different types of devices. It seems like, um, you know, even the most, uh, you know, old devices, things like even camera systems, things like that, they're all uh, connected to the Internet in some form and they're all networked in some form, um, which means it's very difficult to be able to know everything that's out there and identify all these devices in terms of what they are, what sort of operating systems are running, uh, really get a good feel for, you know, again, what they're doing on the network in the first place. You know, I might have, you know, one of those uh, personal trackers, for example, that I use. And, you know, I may have that connect to, uh, you know, a laptop or something. Well, if that somehow connects to a corporate network, well, there's another device that's running on my network that I didn't know about before. Um, so it's really important that CISOs start to get better visibility into the devices that are connecting, but also where these devices are moving around in the network, too. And these devices specifically are really not being designed with security in mind. Uh, you know, we've seen this in the news. There's been a number of incidents in the last few months. I mean, one of the more high-profile ones was the Mirai botnet, which took advantage of several IoT devices in homes. Um, you know, revelations yesterday from the uh, Wiki, WikiLeaks news about the uh, CIA leaks. Um, so without them being designed with security in mind, what do security managers need to know because of that? Yeah, it, it's interesting. When you look at uh, a lot of CISOs, what they've really been concerned around, uh, concerned about for this uh, period of time is around network security, so securing their networks, making sure they have firewalls and things in place. But, but really, they also have to look at the devices themselves because they're not really being built for security, as you pointed out. Um, you know, when we look at, uh, you know, television sets, refrigerators, you know, we look at, again, these personal trackers, um, security cameras, you know, all, you know, even devices that access, you know, doorways, things like that. Um, they're all being networked, and yet they're not being built, you know, from a software standpoint, from a security standpoint, to make sure that they're keeping, you know, malware from getting in, uh, but also being recruited for certain events like, you know, zombie attacks or DDoS attacks. And I think we're seeing a lot of those more recently around not only breaking these devices and maybe using them as a way to penetrate networks, but worse than that, they're being leveraged as, you know, being able to send huge volumes of traffic uh, to be able to take down different systems. So they're being used for multiple purposes, but you know, the, the, it's still the same problem. They're vulnerable to attack. Um, even years ago, you know, there was um, uh, you know, talk of pacemakers being hacked into, or you know, and we've all seen automobiles that have been hacked into as well. I mean, all these devices can be taken control over in some different form or used to be able to get to uh, more critical assets in the infrastructure. Regardless, users still want to be able to have access to them. They want to be able to use them. Um, we saw similar challenges a few years ago when BYOD was what we talked about. Um, you know, a lot of organizations, you know, had to figure out policies and rules around allowing folks to use their own devices. And now this kind of takes it a step further. Are, uh, are they looking at kind of segmenting things again? Or is, you know, the open network still the way that they are leaning? Right, right. Yeah, you know, it, the evolution of, uh, you know, BYD into IoT, you can kind of see the similarities very very clearly. Um, it was where people were connecting with their devices, you know, their own devices, you know, for corporate purposes into the network. But I didn't necessarily know what those devices were. You know, all of a sudden one person went from having, you know, a single laptop or maybe two devices connected to a network. Now they've got four. You know, they've got their iPad, they've got their, you know, they have their um, Android device. They've got all these different devices that are connecting now. Um, so first, the first challenge is being able to identify them. But then the next challenge was, okay, well, I have personal applications that I'm using on these devices as well. So now I may have games or, you know, my bank account information, whatever it is that are stored on these devices and connecting to the network at the same time. Same thing with IoT devices. Now we've kind of split those personal applications into personal devices, you know, again, like a personal tracker. I keep going to that example. But they're still connecting to the same corporate networks, even if they're used for different purposes. So now, again, I have the same challenge where I have to identify the device itself, what it's trying to do. You know, is it something that's trying to connect to a corporate resource, and should it be allowed to? Um, this leads into the, the segmentation area, which is, 
you know, when people had open networks, they knew that a single endpoint or a single laptop or server, whatever it was, was connecting to the, the network for a specific purpose. Now with all these other devices that are on the network from an individual user, um, I really need to be able to identify them, make sure there are policies in place to say, well, this particular traffic from this device can only go to this asset. Um, it's a great way to control um, you know, someone from, let's say, engineering going to you know, a finance server when they really have no reason to be able to do that or even be in that part of the network itself. Um, you know, when we see things like software-defined networking, you know, really that's based on the premise that you know, I'm able to tie a user to an application and then the network kind of builds itself or defines itself to be able to get from point A to point B in a very um, you know, uh, efficient manner. Well, segmentation is part of that. It really uh, keeps a particular user traffic and a set of things that they're trying to do on the network you know, controlled and optimized for getting to the applications they need to and the resources that they're supposed to be able to access. And where do you see this going? I mean, is awareness of this increasing both at the you know, security manager's level as well as at the user level? Or uh, you know, or we still have a long way to go before people really kind of understand the implications here? Yeah, I think people are starting to right now, but it's still going to take some time just because there, there's so much of a rush to be able to get these systems networked because they can be managed. You know, I can access the application you know, of a particular device from my phone. You know, a great example is even alarm systems, right? My home alarm, you know, if I want to be able to access it, I want to be able to set it from my phone as opposed to a panel that's sitting there. Well, that's now an IoT device. So, you know, it's one of those things where I don't know if people always realize how, many, how much of their device is really dependent on the internet and being networked. Um, as they start to, I think customers, corporations, corporate users will start demanding from vendors that they have to build in better security. But in the meantime, you know, the best way for them to protect themselves is really understand who's connecting, what device they're using, but more importantly, also figure out what's going on in the network. Um, you know, what we see is that while the access piece of it, you know, seeing who's coming in and out is getting a little better, um, people still don't know what's going on inside, which is how a breach really happens, right? People can start to leak data outside or they're moving around within the network and, and people don't know about it. Um, you know, really being able to lock that down and monitor it is really what's gonna help people from going, hmm, why is, you know, this person, you know, a great example of this doctor, uh, you know, in New York, uh, whose office is based out of there, are suddenly trying to connect with their device, um, you know, from, from Beijing. There's no reason for them to be able to do that. And really, our policy doesn't allow that to happen, our segmentation policy. So I don't want that to happen. But, you know, let's say they are even using an authorized device and getting in. Their network traffic really shouldn't be moving towards, um, you know, let's say the billing department. They really don't need to be part of the billing area. They just really need to get the patient records. I need to be able to monitor my network systems and really understand that usage. Um, and that's a great way to be able to figure out something odd is going on, even if I don't know what it is yet. Okay, great. So. I want to thank Sanjay Raja with Lumeta for being with us today. Great. I appreciate it. Thank you. And for more on security and the Internet of Things, please spend some more time on CSO Online. For now, I'm Joan Goodchild. Thanks for watching.